I have to participate in sex offender groups and stuff like that uh, twice a month. You know, it don't, it don't stop your life, man. From his humble beginnings in New Orleans to his rise to fame under Master P's No Limit Records, Mystical's talent and unique style have left an indelible mark on the rap scene. Unfortunately, Mystical's career was marred by a series of legal troubles that had a significant impact on his life and music. This is the tragic fate of Mystical and how he navigated the highs and lows of the music industry. Disturbing Allegations Mystical, born Michael Lawrence Tyler, had a challenging upbringing in the vibrant city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Growing up in the tough neighborhoods of Crescent City before entering the music industry, Mystical took a detour in his life by joining the United States Army as a combat engineer. I still wanted to do something productive, but I was outside of school. I was enough of that sick of the you know, so I said I'd join the military and go get me a BMW or something, he revealed in an interview. However, in 1994, Michelle Tyler, Mr. Cal's sister's life was cut short, leaving the rapper and his family shattered. The aftermath of Michelle's murder was a scene of devastation and despair. Mr. Cal, who had been away at the time, returned home to find his sister's lifeless body. The sight was enough to shatter his world and leave an indelible mark on his soul. The pain and anguish he felt were immeasurable, and the questions surrounding his sister's death would haunt him for years to come. Music became mystical refuge, his solace in the face of unimaginable tragedy. He poured his heart and soul into his art as his true calling remained in music. In the early 1990s, Mystical signed with Big Boy Records and released his debut album, Mystical Madness. Although the album didn't achieve mainstream success, it showcased his raw talent and distinctive style, setting the stage for what was to come. During this time, Mystical also found himself embroiled in conflicts with other New Orleans rappers signed to rivals Cash Money Records. These feuds added fuel to the fire of his determination, driving him to prove himself as a force to be reckoned with in the rap game. Mystical's career took a monumental turn when he signed with Master P's legendary label, No Limit Records. Under the guidance of Master P, Mystical's talent flourished, and he quickly became one of the label's most prominent artists. In 2000, Mystical released his fourth studio album, Let's Get Ready, which catapulted him to new heights of fame. The album debuted at the top of the Billboard 200 chart, solidifying Mystical's status as a rising star in the music industry. It showcased his versatility as an artist, blending his signature raspy vocals with infectious beats and captivating storytelling. Two of the standout tracks from Let's Get Ready were Shake Your and Danger Been So Long. These hit singles became instant classics and dominated the airwaves. Shake Your became an anthem with its catchy chorus and energetic production, while Danger Been So Long showcased Mystical's lyrical prowess and his ability to command attention with his dynamic delivery. The success of these hit singles propelled Mystical into the mainstream spotlight, earning him widespread recognition and a dedicated fan base. His unique style and electrifying performances captivated audiences, making him a force to be reckoned with in the rap scene. Unfortunately, Mystical's career was marred by a series of legal troubles that had a significant impact on his life and music. In 2003, he he faced a major setback when he was indicted on charges of sexual battery and extortion. It was a day that would forever change the life of rap star Mystica. Woman claims she was robbed and held against her will by a man whose fame did not provide him any favors. Tonight, Mystical sits in the Ascension Jail accused of charges that could put him away for life if he's convicted. It all began when Mystical accused his hairstylist of stealing $80,000 from him. The stylist would become the central figure in the sexual battery case that would rock the music industry. What followed was a shocking and disturbing turn of events. Allegedly seeking retribution, Mystical, along with two bodyguards Leland Pokey Ellis and Versi V. Carter, subjected the hairstylist to a harrowing ordeal. They forced her to perform sexual acts on them, acts that were not only grading, but were also captured on videotape. Mystical's lawyers and record label remained tight-lipped about the situation, refusing to comment on the allegations. As the legal proceedings unfolded, Mystical's fate hung in the balance. Would he be able to clear his name and prove his innocence, or would he face the consequences of his alleged actions? Fans and the public were left wondering how their beloved rapper could find himself entangled in such a dark and troubling situation. The severity of the charges against Mystical was initially aggravated rape and extortion. However, in a plea agreement, Mystical pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of sexual battery and extortion. His lawyer had filed a motion to withdraw the guilty plea, but ultimately decided against it. The court. Proceedings shed light on the harrowing nature of the acts committed. A videotape of the incident was presented as evidence, providing a chilling visual account of the victim's ordeal. Judge Tony Marabella described the victim as terrorized and highlighted the severity of the crimes committed against her. Mystical, along with his bodyguards, pleaded guilty to sexual battery charges. He also pleaded guilty to extortion. As a result, 
he was sentenced to six years in prison, while his bodyguards received prison sentences of three and four years. Mystical paid the victim $350,000, borrowing $300,000 from his record label. The consequences of the case were far-reaching. Mystical's music career came to a halt, and he became a pariah in the industry. The once celebrated rapper's name became forever associated with the heinous acts he committed. Well, more bad news followed, as the rapper would not get any kind of special treatment in jail. He didn't show the victim any sympathy, and he doesn't get any sympathy or special treatment. So he will be in general population or, or will be incarcerated just like anyone else. Mystical's conviction sent shockwaves through the music industry and left fans and critics questioning the true nature of the man behind the music. For six long years, Mystical was confined to a prison cell, paying the price for his disturbing actions. But in 2010, he was released, seemingly ready to turn his life around and make a comeback in the music scene. With his newfound freedom, Mystical was determined to leave his troubled past behind and focus on rebuilding his music career. Fast forward to 2017, and Mystical once again found himself facing serious charges. This time, he was accused of first degree rape and second-degree kidnapping. Mystical was arrested in Louisiana after a victim identified him as a suspect in a harrowing crime. He was subsequently booked into the Ascension Parish Jail. 51-year-old Michael Tyler, also, also known as Mystical, was arrested on multiple charges including first-degree rape and domestic abuse battery. Detectives interviewed a victim at a hospital who sustained injuries. The investigation led to Tyler being identified as a suspect. In 2016, a horrifying incident took place at a Shreveport casino, Louisiana. Shreveport police obtained warrants for one count of first-degree rape for the 46-year-old rapper and a second individual named Averweon Holman, who was arrested in Killeen, Texas. Investigators collected statements from the victim and witness plus physical evidence. They submitted the physical evidence to the North Louisiana Criminalistics Laboratory for DNA analysis. The DNA evidence recovered by sex crimes investigators linked Mystical and Averwan Holman to the alleged rape, securing warrants for them, each with one count of first-degree rape. Their bond was set at $2 million each. While Mystical surrendered himself, the U.S. Marshals Task Force arrested Holman in Killeen, Texas on August 18, 2017. A 42-year-old female associate named Tanichia Wofford of Harker Heights was also arrested and charged with one count of accessory after the fact to first-degree rape. She allegedly sought the victim out in an effort to convince her to drop the charges against Mystical and Holman. Her bond was set at $2 million. In late 2017, a grand jury issued indictments on the two introducing a second-degree kidnapping charge stemming from the incident. The new charges and increased bail came following requests from both men for bail reductions. As it turned out, Mystical's lawyer Kenneth Beck told the court that his client maintained his innocence and requested a reduction in the rapper's $2 million bail. However, the judge denied the request and instead raised the bail to $3 million. This prompted the lawyers to request for the judge to be changed. The lawyer of M Michael Tyler, aka Mystical, asked Judge Ramona Emanuel to recuse herself from the case because she previously denied to lower his bond, and she agreed to step down, and Judge Brady O'Callaghan will now oversee the case. Nearly a year and a half after turning himself in on the rape charge, Mystical was released from the Caddo Correctional Center on $3 million bond. It feels good. It feels good. It's grateful. grateful for this opportunity to get my life back, you know, get to, get to being back that man that, that I was called to be. The allegations were shocking, and the music industry was left in disbelief. But as the legal proceedings unfolded, new evidence came to light, leading to the dismissal of these charges, bringing a glimmer of hope for Mystical and his supporters. It seemed like he had escaped the clutches of the law once again. But just when it seemed like he was in the clear, a new storm seemed brewing on the horizon. In December 2020, after spending 18 long months behind bars, awaiting trial and fighting to prove his innocence. In a shocking turn of events, new evidence and information were discovered, casting doubt on the validity of the allegations. The Caddo Parish Grand Jury carefully reviewed the case and ultimately made a groundbreaking decision. Mystical's charges were then dropped due to lack of evidence. The Grand Jury also dismissed the first-degree rape and second-degree kidnapping charges against him. Charges are dropped against Louisiana rapper Mystical. Michael Tyler was originally charged in 2017 for first-degree rape and kidnapping. According to the Caddo DA's office, more evidence was discovered and the case was resubmitted to a second grand jury. That grand jury did not find enough evidence to charge Tyler. After spending 18 months in prison, Mystico was finally released on bond. His spirits renewed with a glimmer of hope. The weight of the allegations that had haunted him for years began to lift as he stepped back into the world he had once known. Man one was f***ed up bad man, I was lost. It took me about a year, a year and a half to kind of readjust here. 
earlier because I had totally disconnected when I was doing that time, Mystical revealed an interview. Mystical's legal troubles seem to be never ending, with this latest indictment adding to the long list of criminal counts he faces. On July 31st, 2022, Mystical's world came crashing down once more. He was arrested again for beating and choking a woman at his Ascension Parish home during a heated argument over finances. It is alleged that before releasing the victim, Mystical made the victim send him a $100 payment, which he claimed she stole from him, then later on, forced her to send an extra $150. The woman claimed that at first she refused Mystical's demands, and he is accused of sexually assaulting the woman. The 51-year-old was charged with criminal damage to property worth less than $1,000 and false imprisonment, all charges resulting in five offenses. Ascension Parish Sheriff's deputies, after an interview with the victim at Baton Rouge General Hospital, where the victim had showed up with bruises and cuts, and her damaged clothing, which were consistent with the account of an assault. According to the warrant, the woman further disclosed that the conversation before the attack seemed fine, but as she was about to leave for Walmart to pick up some items, Mystical's demeanor changed. The woman alleged he struck her several times while confronting her about the $100. At some point, the affidavit said he picked up a pair of scissors and told her he would f*** her up and that she would need medical attention. She said that he seemed fine when they were initially talking. At some point, he stepped away, maybe to the restroom. He came back a completely different person. This reignited the flames of controversy and raised questions about his troubled past. These shocking allegations have left fans and critics stunned, wondering how someone with such a troubled history could find themselves in this situation once again. Rappers and sexual assault cases. As Mystical remains incarcerated without bail, awaiting his trial, the world watches with bated breath to see what the future holds for this once promising artist. Will he be able to clear his name and rebuild his life, or will he face the harsh consequences of his alleged actions as some of the top rappers in the industry did? As it turns out, Mystical is not the only artist who has found himself in such heinous cases. One of the biggest names in the music industry, R. Kelly, ended up behind bars because of similar charges. So how did a man who once seemed untouchable end up losing his freedom over allegations of sexual abuse to charges of child exploitation. I stand here very proud of my judicial system, very proud of my fellow survivors, and very pleased with the outcome. 30 years did he do this, and 30 years is what he got. In the late 1980s, a young and talented artist from Chicago, Illinois, emerged onto the music scene. His name was Robert Sylvester Kelly, but the world would come to know him as R. Kelly. With his smooth vocals and undeniable charisma, electrifying performances, and his ability to craft chart-topping hits, he was a force to be reckoned with, dominating the airwaves and capturing the hearts of millions. Kelly quickly made a name for himself in the industry. One of his most iconic songs, I Believe I I Can Fly became an anthem of hope and inspiration, solidifying his status as a musical powerhouse. The track soared to the top of the charts and earned Kelly numerous awards, including three Grammy Awards. With success came wealth and fame, and R. Kelly seemed to have it all. But behind the scenes, a darker side of his life was beginning to unravel that would forever tarnish R. Kelly's reputation and lead to his shocking downfall. A spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago telling USA Today a federal grand jury has indicted Kelly on on 13 counts, including child pornography, enticement of a minor, and obstruction of justice. It was in the early 2000s that the first major blow to Kelly's image occurred. A video surfaced, allegedly showing him engaging in sexual acts with an underage girl. The shocking revelation sent shockwaves through the industry and led to his arrest on child pornography charges. FBI forensics experts from Quantico have closely examined the tape. They tell us it's authentic. However, in 2008, Kelly was acquitted of all charges after the jury failed to reach a verdict. It was a controversial decision that left many questioning the justice system and the true extent of Kelly's actions. First of all, I'm not aware of anything like that. And, and for people, unknown people, to make those um, statements against me is, is, is ridiculous. Despite the acquittal, the allegations of sexual abuse continued to haunt Kelly. Over the years, numerous women came forward with harrowing stories of manipulation, coercion, and abuse at the hands of the singer. Some even claimed that Kelly ran a sex cult where young women were allegedly held against their will. These shocking allegations painted a disturbing picture of a man who had used his fame and power to exploit and control others. In 2019, the documentary series Surviving R. Kelly aired, giving a voice to the survivors and shedding light on the dark underbelly of the music 
industry. The series reignited public outrage and led to renewed investigations into Kelly's actions. In 2021, Kelly faced his first federal trial on charges of racketeering, sexual exploitation of a child, and kidnapping. The trial lasted for several weeks, with multiple witnesses testifying against him. And in a shocking turn of events, he was found guilty on all counts. I just like you to know that you really hurt me. I was a little girl in like a bad man's world. I never really recovered from it. I'm really angry with you for what you're doing. But the legal battles were far from over. In 2022, Kelly faced a second federal trial, this time on charges of child sexual abuse. The evidence presented was damning, and once again, he was found guilty. The verdict sent shockwaves through the music industry and the world at large. In the aftermath of his convictions, Kelly's former manager, Donald Russell, was sentenced to prison for stalking and harassing one of the singer's victims. It was a stark reminder that Kelly's actions had far-reaching consequences for those involved. In January, January 2023, some charges against Kelly were dropped, but it was a small victory in the face of his mounting legal troubles. Just a month later, in February 2023, he was sentenced to an additional 20 years in prison for child sex crimes, a sentence that ensured he would spend the rest of his life behind bars. The story of R. Kelly's rise and fall, just like Mystical's story, serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the importance of accountability and the devastating consequences that have led to a shift in the industry, with increased scrutiny and demands for accountability. Artists and industry professionals are now facing the consequences of their actions as the world recognizes the need for systemic change, a reminder that no one is above the law no matter how successful or influential they may be. Just recently, Sean Diddy Combs, popularly known as P. Diddy, the renowned rapper and mogul, was hit by a wave of lawsuits alleging sexual assault and other heinous crimes. Cassie, the former girlfriend of P. Diddy, shared her own experiences suffered at the hands of Diddy. In response to the allegations, P. Diddy and his representative have vehemently denied the accusations, stating that they were baseless and without merit. They maintained that P. Diddy has always treated others with respect and dignity, and that these claims are part of a malicious attempt to tarnish his reputation. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably on terms that I have some level of control. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. The response from Combs and his representative has been one of denial, dismissing the allegations as made up and not credible. Just so we're clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Miss Ventura the best. Joy Dickerson Neal, a courageous survivor, has come forward in 2023 with disturbing allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. In her lawsuit, filed under the Adult Survivors Act, Dickerson Neal claims that she was attacked by Combs in 1991, subjected to drugging, sexual assault, and the distribution of revenge. In response to these shocking allegations, Combs' representative dismissed them as made up and not credible. This denial only added fuel to the fire, intensifying the public's curiosity and skepticism. Diddy was forced to take to social media to deny the charges. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me absolutely clear, I did not do any of the awful things alleged. I will fight for my my name, my family, and the truth. Joy Dickerson accusations come days after an unnamed woman, referred to as Jane Doe Jane, filed a similar lawsuit alleging that both P. Diddy and Aaron Hall were involved in a horrific incident of sexual assault in 1990 or 1991. According to Jane Doe, she and a friend were subjected to a nightmarish ordeal at the hands of Combs and Hall. The lawsuit claims that they were drugged, overpowered, and sexually assaulted. According to the lawsuit, one of the men approached Jane Doe at a lounge in Michigan, convincing her to take a private jet to P. Diddy recording studio in New York City. Once there, the defendants allegedly plied her with drugs and alcohol, creating an environment of vulnerability and exploitation. Doe's legal team has taken a bold step by filing a federal lawsuit against P. Diddy, two other men, and two corporate entities. Their claim is that these defendants preyed on a vulnerable teenager as part of a horrifying sex trafficking schemes. As the legal battle unfolds, P. Diddy finds himself facing not only the accusations of sexual assault, but also claims of being involved in a sex trafficking scheme. 
scheme. The lawsuit alleges that he and the two other men preyed on a vulnerable teenager, using their power and influence to carry out their heinous acts. As the legal battle unfolds, the truth of these shocking allegations will be determined through the ongoing investigations and legal proceedings. The outcome will have far-reaching implications, not just for P. Diddy, but for the entire entertainment industry. Mystical R. Kelly and P. Diddy lawsuits are proof that sexual assault is a deeply troubling issue that affects countless individuals, and while they vehemently denied the accusations, this next famous figure in the hip-hop industry chose a different approach to face allegations against him. Hip-hop mogul Dr. Dre issued a public apology to the women he hurt in the past. This apology came after years of allegations of domestic violence and mistreatment towards women. Dr. Dre has been celebrated for his groundbreaking music and entrepreneurial success. However, behind the scenes, a dark cloud has loomed over his reputation. Allegations of domestic violence and mistreatment towards women have haunted him for decades. Dr. Dre's ex-wife, Nicole Young, alleged that Dr. Dre held a gun to her head, not once, but twice, in the years 2000 and 2001. However, it's important to note that Dr. Dre vehemently denied these allegations. He maintained that he never threatened Nicole's physical safety and disputed the accounts of the incidents she described. Dr. Dre became entangled in a bitter divorce battle between him and Nicole Young. Nicole's request for $100,000 a month in spousal support raised eyebrows, with some questioning her motives and others recognizing the financial implications of leaving an abusive relationship. This incident served as a chilling precursor to the more harrowing events that would unfold in the years to come. New allegations against Dr. Dre came to light when hip-hop journalist D. Barnes accused him of physically assaulting her in the early 1990s. Barnes, known for her work on the popular music show Pump It Up, claimed that Dr. Dre attacked her at a party, leaving her with physical injuries and emotional trauma. They grabbed me by my hair and started slamming me up against the wall. It's, it is a, it's a painful and traumatic experience. But Barnes wasn't the only woman to come forward. R&B singer Mikalu, who was in a relationship with Dr. Dre, also spoke out about the emotional and physical abuse she endured during their time together. When one night we was arguing, he went and got the gun, and I just made it through the bathroom door and a shot, and he shot at me and he missed me by that much. These allegations have cast a shadow over Dr. Dre's legacy, raising questions about the treatment of women in the music industry and the responsibility of artists to be held accountable for their actions. And after years of silence, Dr. Dr. Dre finally broke his silence. In a public apology released on social media, he acknowledged his past behavior and expressed deep remorse for the pain he had caused to the women he hurt. The impact of Dre's apology extended beyond his personal life. It reignited the conversation about violence against women and the importance of holding individuals accountable, regardless of their status or influence. In his apology statement, he said, 25 years ago, I was a young man drinking too much and in over my head with no real structure in my life. However, none of this is an excuse for what I did. I've been married for 19 years and every day I'm working to be a better man for my family, seeking guidance along the way. I'm doing everything I can so I never resemble that man again. I apologize to the women I've hurt. I deeply regret what I did and know that it has forever impacted all of our lives. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.